And as you can see here, we have captured my unique Google user ID. And we can use that for marketing and offline conversions. Hey marketers and marketing enthusiasts, business owners, hosts, and you know, everyone in between. Today I got something really cool for you. I'm gonna show you how to capture a Google user ID from someone who's browsing your website. And we're gonna use that to submit to HubSpot using a form capture. So you've got that user ID in HubSpot or CRM, or you can capture it by email or put it into anywhere that you want. And the point is we're gonna use it for offline conversions later on, which is gonna be another video. Now, just to note that this only works with UA, Universal Analytics, not with the new GA4, which I'm gonna say at the end as well, just to hit it home. Uh, so this will only work for the next year or so at the time of filming this video. If you wanna uh, know how to set up this UID capture with GA4 properties. I'm gonna put a link once I release the video, which is gonna be maybe the next week or the week after that. So let's get right into it and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need WordPress and we're gonna to need to go over to Google Tag Manager as well. You don't have to use WordPress. Uh, you can use any contact form, but in my particular instance, I have a contact form seven field that I've set up. Now I tried to do this directly with the HubSpot forms that you embed. However, JavaScript within JavaScript proved itself to be very difficult. So what we're gonna rely on is just a website form like contact seven and then uh, HubSpot's gonna pick that up as an offline form submission. So all I've done here is created an additional text field called GCLID underscore field. Um, and I would uh, name that accordingly as GUID for the user ID rather than GCLID so you don't get confused with the actual click ID which comes from ads. So I might have made a little mistake there in terms of organizational purposes. In either case, that's what it looks like. And ideally what you'd wanna do is make that hidden I took a lot of this information from a blog at mixedanalytics.com, so shout out to them. I'll uh, definitely post a link for that. And all you have to do in contact form seven is essentially put hidden text area opposed to the just the text field here, but I wanted it to be exposed so we could see. Now head over to Google Tag Manager, and the first thing we're gonna set up is a variable. And I called it store GAID because this is a JavaScript that's gonna store the user ID from the Google Analytics cookie here. And again, follow the blog for the copy paste content on here, blog post below. So what we're doing here is capturing what Google has in the cookie as client ID. And in order for us to retrieve that and store it, we're gonna head over to our tags and we're gonna set up a tag. And so the way we're storing that here is, um, this is the form field that we looked at earlier and the form field equals the store GAID in variable brackets. And if you remember back in variables, the store GAID was the name of the variable. So make sure uh, your, your trigger variable is um, the same naming convention, even if it's spaced, etc., cetera, uh, as the variable itself. Uh, sorry, the tag rather has to have the same uh, name as the variable name. That's here. Next, we'll wanna set up a trigger, and this trigger is basically gonna load the GID only when a certain page loads. And uh, so that's the way that I wanted to do it in terms of just loading on the contact page that we're capturing from, so we're not loading it on every page. So we've done a page view window loaded from the options over here. Page URL equals, and I've got the exact URL. 
So if you find the user ID is not loading properly, uh, there can be some conflicts with it loading. If you have other scripts loading before or after, it's just, um, it's firing off too quickly. So if we go to tags, we can actually create a delay. And all we've done here is um, put in a timer where when the page actually loads, we delay the trigger of loading the UID called it GA delay and now we need a trigger for that as well so if we go to trigger we can hit delay GA captures what I've set up and it's a custom event and make sure both triggers are attached to the tag if we want to use the delay so save that and publish when you're ready and the final result when the page loads will look like this and of course as it loads in the background uh, we've got it displaying but you'll put that as a hidden field and then it'll push into submission as a hidden field with the appropriate id of gclid underscore field now if you're just receiving that email by um or sorry that submission by email you'll have a copy of it in your email However, if you've got HubSpot, for example, which is listening for uh, third-party forms submitted on your website, you'll get a field such as this. If set up, and this is the user ID um, submitted by the form and captured into a contact card. And I've just simply um, added this field here by going to view all properties if you're not familiar. Then you've got your properties here, GCLID. So I've created that in conversion information. And I've also named the actual internal field name, GCLID underscore field to match what I'm submitting on the contact form. So HubSpot's automatically picking that up because it matches the field name. And of course, uh, if you don't match it, like and set it up beforehand, you can always go into your um, submitted forms and you can map the fields to where you want them. And the end result is a field with that user ID. So there's a couple of things to note. First and foremost, this does not work with the new GA4 format. That's very uh, complicated. And I do have another video I'll be posting about a week after this on how to do this exact capturing of the UID with GA4. This will only work with UA or Universal Analytics. So it's got an expiration of about next June or July. Second of all, you can use this user ID for running reports in HubSpot or other CRMs or databases, um, whatever purpose you're using it for. All we're demonstrating here really is that we can capture the UID to do offline conversions. Of course, one of the biggest challenges is capturing the data when you don't have a point of sale or an e-commerce website. So that's the purpose here. So look out for a future video where I'm going to show you how to take this user ID and use it for offline conversion information in Google Analytics and more importantly, Google Ads. So I hope I could bring some value to you in your marketing efforts or your business. And if so, uh, feel free to uh, give back to me and help me grow the channel, likes up, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. I have something nice for you. Bye bye for now.